when I was asked by London Underground to do something for Brixton Station, I was thinking to myself, what, out of all the paintings I've done, The Three Wicked Men is the ideal painting. The businessman, the politician, and the policeman. So I thought, that's the ideal painting, so I'll have to do another version. So I started making drawings. I've kept the main um, focus on the three wicked men, like you can see, but I've changed lots of the background in the painting. Because Brixton is, to me, to do with music, song systems and stuff like that, I decided to have an image that gave a feeling of that with a, an amplifier and, um, and playing records. This spot, I've tried to give a feeling of a tunnel, in fact, subway. And in, I've, I've indicated things to do with the underground, which is like in the guy's hat. Because a lot of the um, Windrush people, or pre-Windrush, a lot of them came over to work on the National Health Service and um, London Transport, of course. And I remember when I was a kid, there used to be lots of guys going around with big hats with the London transport. And um, I've used it there in the record, the record sleeve. And I've introduced a kid in this one, which um, the original one in the 80s doesn't have. And of course, the two big speakers. I think the two big speakers actually helped to focus it, linking up with the two police guys on the side. I've done a lot of drawings of police guys standing in front of speakers. They must like reggae music. I mean, look, they're standing in front of big boxes. Uh, people tend to avoid using the police a lot, um, but they're so much part of our lives. I mean, the more they are used, um, I think, you know, the more probably they'll be good policemen, I think. When I used to go to galleries and stuff in the 80s and 90s, you'll be lucky if you see anything to do with kind of your life. <laughs> yeah, so, um, because I'm talking as if it was about contemporary black culture, I suppose, and stuff like that. Um, all the nightclubs and the arrest and stuff. You don't, you know, people wouldn't be that interested at the time in recording that type of stuff, but they would have lived through it and understood it. Yeah. So I think this painting would have definitely, they will definitely relate to this painting. This is my second time turning up to see Brixton Blue. A complete contrast from yesterday, which was five o'clock in the morning, about 20 people about. So now it's like a, a carnival, basically. The movement and action in it, I think it's quite nice. The painting is going that way and people are going down and underneath. Someone immediately noticed it, took a picture of it and reckons, oh, this is before gentrification. And he was referring to himself. I'm the person who's come to Brixton and gentrified it as opposed to pre gentrification <laughs> So, that was, so that, was, that was a very good reaction. I came to live in London when I was 11 years old and I used to live with a family. Um, my, my parents had a house with them, the, the, the Rose family. Um, and um, I made friends with one of their sons. His name was Winston Rose. Then his parents moved and I didn't see him for about, I don't know, three or four years. And I was at art school, I was at Royal College in the early 80s. And I was looking at the local news one evening and Winston Rose popped up on the television killed in police custody. So I was shocked because I knew him. We lived together for about eight, nine years, and suddenly he's gone. Basically, what stop and search in the day, back in the 80s, with Maggie Thatcher and all that type of stuff. I mean, you'll be followed at night. You, you know, you're just walking down the street, there'll be a car cruising, following you. Yeah, with all the stabbings and knife, they're trying to bring it back and not actually dealing with the sources of a lot of the places where young people could go and make something out of their life. When I was young, in the 80s, those places were there. You could go there for three hours in the evening and where they do boxing, judo, painting, pottery, photography, they're not there anymore. So what the hell do you do? You know, you go out on the streets and you're vulnerable. So that's what they need to do. They need to bring back all these lovely places for young people to access their creativity.